Dear comrades and guests, welcome to our memorial event to honour comrades Derish Kawazala and Kostas Michalis. We would like to welcome our special guests, presidents of Cypriot Community Centre, Ms. Susie Costanidu, manager of Cypriot Community Centre, Mr. Chris Deleano, secretary of Akel in Britain, comrade Pambas Karalambas, and general secretary of Turkish Cypriot Association for Democracy, Ferdi Suleiman. And now I would like to invite comrade Lukas Papayanis to give a main speech. On April 11th, 1965, the murderous bullets of Turkish Cypriot terrorist group TMT ended the lives of our comrades Dervis Ali Kavazulu and Gostan Mishaulis. The comrades were driving from Nicosia to Larnaca on trade union business. Kavazulu was a member of Agel's Central Committee and Mishaulis was a trade unionist and member of the party. When they were intercepted and murdered by TMT near Lurogina on the old Nicosia Larnaca Road. The murderers wanted to send a message to all Turkish Cypriots that any association with Agel and the Greek Cypriots would not be tolerated. They wanted to terrorize them into breaking all ties. The bullets cut our comrades' life short, but they did not silence them. In their death, as in their lives, our comrades are a beacon of inspiration. Dervis Ali Kavazoglu was due in Larnaca that fateful morning on union business, but the people who were to accompany him were un unavailable. On the last minute, he asked his friend and colleague, Ostas Mishaulis, to accompany him. Mishaulis had planned with his family to visit his father on that Sunday, but given that nobody else was available, decided to go to Larnaca with Dervis instead. He hugged and kissed his daughters and promised them he would be home by noon to take them to their grandfather, a promise he was never able to keep. In their sacrifice, they became a big one of friendship and rapprochement between the two communities. In their lives, they were also a symbol of class struggle. They devoted their lives to friendship and peaceful coexistence between the two communities and in fighting jointly for workers' rights and for a fair and equal society. Unfortunately, the years that followed their murders, the fascists won the day in Cyprus. After a long decade of ethnic segregation, murders and prosecutions against the left, attempts against the life of the democratically elected president, finally, on July 15, 1974, Eokavita, with the help of the Athenian Kunda, managed to enforce fascist military rule in Cyprus, followed within five days by the Turkish invasion that still divides our island. As a girl, we always stood firm and believe that Turkish and Greek, Greek Cypriots can and should live together. We always stood firm that the most fair, realistic solution to the Cyprus problem is bi-zonal, bi-communal federation. We always stood firm in the belief that the left that left in their own devices, Greeks and Turks would live peacefully in Cyprus, not only alongside, but together. I still remember Akel organizing bicommunal events in the 90s, when rapprochement was a dirty word. As a party, we always had the grit and the determination to accept the political cost of a choice that we knew was the right one, but at the time was not popular. I was a teenager in the 90s, and like most Edonides, I was active in the rapprochement movement, which consisted of a cluster of leftist organizations, the largest of which was Akel. I still remember the motorcyclists standing alongside the women dressed in black, shouting insults at us as we walked through the Lidra Palace barrier for bicommunal events. For a group of teenagers to go through that barrier while hearing curses from women because we were meeting uh, in their minds, those who killed their sons was a traumatic experience. Of course, we knew that all the Turks did not kill their sons. Like all the Greeks did not kill those Turkish Cyprian sons and daughters that died between 1963 and 1974. We knew that fascism, armed by imperialism, as it so often is, killed everybody's sons and daughters. The easiest thing back then, both for the teenagers and Akel, would be to step back Ease, a bit, ease off a little bit and allow the pressure to lessen. But how could we? How could we dishonor the memory of Kavazoglu and Mishaulis and so many other comrades who lived and died for a uni unified Cyprus by cowarding? Dear friends, it's tempting to suggest that the troubles of the past will remain there. It is tempting to say these things don't happen nowadays. It is tempting, but false, and perilous. In the words of 
Charles Balder, and please forgive my French accent, the finest trick of the devil is to persuade you that he does not exist. In a, word, in a world where Frankenstein monsters like ISIS and Al-Qaeda thrive on the rubbles created by imperialist military interventions, this devil is not only alive, but growing stronger by the day. As religious extremism is raging in parts of the Middle East, as well as in European capitals, and the far right is galloping ahead in the polls across the Western world, the message of our fallen comrades takes an urgent and global nature. In our country, the situation is on is also looking disheartening. Although the looming presence of Agel has limited so far the rise of extremist party and organization, we're observing a hardening of the stance of certain segments on the population of Cyprus problem. The parties in the so-called center try to restore their evaporating electoral support and relevance, adopted a much harder line on the Cyprus problem, seeking to capitalize on this change of stance from parts of the population. For the first time in decades, the Cypriot National Council still isn't unanimous in supporting bizonal bicommunal federation at one of the most critical points in the history of the Cyprus problem. We see segmentation in the Greek side, a very dangerous sign indeed. Agel is the only party that has been stable in its views on the Cyprus problem. Agel is the only party that has been stable in its determination for rapprochement. Agel is the only party that faced with electorally unpopular choices always makes the right one and not the popular one. Agel is the party of Gavazoglu and Mikhashaulis, the party they believed in. We're all joined by a shared use of a unified and socially just Cyprus. It's critical that Agel remain strong to defend our country from the opportunists and the nationalists, and the only way Agel can remain strong is if we all join together and work to achieve that. We will never forget our fallen comrades. We will continue to honor not only their sacrifice, but above all their lives, their values, and their achievements. But for a few words, once a year, so woefully inadequate to honor these lives and this sacrifice. The only way to truly honor them is to complete what they started. We have to achieve a unified and socially just country. It, it, it is our duty before Michaud and Gavazoglu, as well as before all those who are were murdered for their beliefs during that turbulent period that we ensure that the fascist success in 1974 is short-lived. It is our duty, above all, to the next generation that we create a, uni a united, peaceful, and just country. Thank you. And now we will have a short speech by Comrade Nurettin Seferol. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends and comrades, when we come together to remember, to mention, and to celebrate this unholy and these dastardly dates, we do not mention only their names, but the conditions, circumstances, and their struggles. It is not only Teresh Ali Kavazolu or Mishaoli who died, who were murdered. There are hundreds of people who gave their lives fighting against the fascist elements in both communities who either they are murdered and who they are obliged to leave their country, Cyprus, and went abroad. Some of them came to the UK. Some of them went as far away as Australia and New Zealand in order to save their lives. Here we have my old friend Hulus, who narrowly escaped being murdered and many others who came to Britain and other places. I will start with Derwish Ali, Kavazolu, and Mishaoli. I came to know Dervish Ali Kavazolu in Nicosia, in prison, when the British colonial authorities imprisoned 130 Greek and Turkish Cypriots. 30 Turkish Cypriots were picked up. I doubt whether, apart from a few, knows from where Dervish Ali Kavazolu comes from. He came from P. Peristerona in the Karpas Peninsula, named Peristeronobii. He came to Nicosia to earn a living. He did not go to school. He was a technical element. He used to make chairs and other seating materials. His English was poor. His Greek was poor, but he developed his knowledge 
and uh, became an expert technical element. But because he was buried in Dali, he used to go there to bring to Dali a school teacher. For that reason, he was in touch with other people to bring a teacher to Dali. I was in London at the time, and at lunch times, we used to meet with Sadi, who was working in a travel agency. When we read in the Daily Worker, which today is called Morning Star, about the murder. Here I want Comrade Christodoulos Tilianou. When three top leaders of Agel came from Cyprus to take me to Cyprus to take the place of Cavazolo. When I went to Cyprus, I was taken to the home of Yan Nikatsura and told me that Dervish Ali Cavazolo was a very good comrade. But in his urge to do something, he fell foul in the hands of enemies of the two communities and was murdered. They said to me, there, you will never go out without telling us where you are going. I said, you have my word for it. Dervish Ali Kawazolu did not find the time to get married, to have a family. To this day, his relatives come to me when I'm in Cyprus to see the place where Kawazolu was hiding. All his relatives now have grandchildren and they want to see the place and photos that I give it to them. How about Sadi, who came to London? Sadi was a cultured man. He went to Lurgina. He was born in 1913. For three years, he went to Lurgina, a sort of secondary school. He was shot, and his wife threw herself in front of them and saved Sadi from a definite murder. We were great friends with Sadi. He made his will, and in that will, he said, if I died, I want you to look after my children. So did his wife. When he died, we opened the will and sold his house and we bought a smaller house because his children were underage and needed education. I never spent a penny of that money. During the long time that I have been in the trade unions and the party of Agel, I came to know Ayhan Hikmet, Muzaffer Gürkan, Ihsan Ali, Fazil Önder, Sella, and others. Gentlemen, I want to say a few words uh, about Mr. Uh, Mihali Bumburi, the murder of Kavazolu and Mishaoli, from the book written by Mihalis Bumburi's very, better, very bitter experience from the past. Dervish Ali was a member of the Central Committee of Agel, an active member of PO. Kostas Mishaoli was a leader of the party, and his struggle in the party with Agel in order to set the properly right the relations between Turkish and Greek Cypriots. In addition, they were struggling for a better life and for peace in. Uh, in Cyprus among all people. They considered this the aim of his life. Where others were destroying, he was building for a better life. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, they were so honest, they were so honest that even their enemies admitted this. The first attempt on the life of uh, of uh, Kavazolu in 1958, when Agel and other organizations of the left were declared illegal. Uh, Kavazolu lived passionately when the enemy experienced passionately external uh, 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 people who were trying to divide Cyprus by spreading enmity between the communities. Kavazolu was a communist and of modern type. He was studying all the time. He had views, modern views and understanding about the deepest and ideological uh, 
of the of the people, and he believed that the uh, that the problem should be made uh, by all the people. Kawazolu Mishaoli was a communist who loved the people and his country, and this belief was the second and, and uh, none. He and he in uh, uh, Mishaoli married to Andriana Mishaoli, and he was in charge. They were in charge of the secret printing uh, press, printing illegal books, uh, books and pamphlets. He was honest person, even his enemies were in agreement with that. Mishaoli and the wife, Andriana, they would not deny this. In April 1965, Teresali Kawazul and Costa Mishaoli set out to go to Larnaca on duty, to which the party set them. The agents of the, uh, and enemies of Cyprus set a trap to them and they are murdered in their cars. Both leaders were struggling for the good and society as a whole to get rid of uh, exploitation of man by man. Gentlemen, I want to read something to you from, the, from a newspaper cutting. The, the whole world is shaking from top to bottom. In, uh, in, in uh, London, the government of David uh, Cameron are shaking, and uh, the, the danger is on their doorstep. One more thing, uh, the, these, uh, these uh, uh, dangers are as, as far away as Panama, and uh, people are trying, you see, to set the old days to come back. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. We will now have a short theatrical performance with Vasilis Pani and Panos Sariles. The Road to Freedom. I was a little kid when the preachers formed me to face a wall and put the Greek flag on the floor. I remember my mother say that there were some men called gorillas by the British Army. So many times I have been scared and woke up in the middle of the night by them, the gorillas and the British Army. In 1960, Cyprus becomes independent. I was growing up enjoying the freedom of independence till 1974, July 1974. We picked up few things and left. We got lost in different directions. Our dreams have been unfinished. Our memories, a bunch of nothing. It has been a long time now I am thinking of organizing a journey back there. I am sleeping with my mind all the time there, dreaming about everything I had and not been able to see again. My village, my home, my old school, my street, the olive tree in my garden, my dog, the taste of water from the old tub in my village square. In my mind, I can find all the good and bad things happened to me back in the old days. The scars and the pain that we have been through together, me and my friends, the sorrow and the pain are getting bigger and bigger. Come again, my friends. 
you, the Turks, come again. I'm sure we can work together. We could, again, open the road to a better future. We can have freedom and be able to have a better life and a better future for all of us. Give me your hand and join me. Come and shout with me. No more of this. You, the ones who control the world, leave us alone. We don't need your assistance. We know how to deal with ourselves. Come, my friends, throw away the bullets. Get the roses in your hands. Let's get together and start a new life. It is up to us. Let's do it. It is up to us. We did it before. We can do it again. Let's follow the road to the party. Our party. The party to freedom. To the journey of life. The journey of life is a mysterious game. No one knows where to start or end. We have never asked to play, never came in this way. They put us in the game, that's what we have to say. We now have to play what the others have to say. We have to do the same. What we feel, is it shame? Or we don't want to do it. Or we don't want to play. Play in or away any game. Play any game, any way. Our life is our journey. Let's have it in our hand. Let's all work together. Let's have joy, have fun. We did have very difficult days. But they're gone now. I have seen all bad things in my way. But we had good days too. We are ready to sing again. All the good and happy songs. Me, I just managed to pass the border in Nicosia a few years ago. Managed to see all known places again. Past the old cathedral, which I have missed. The Church of Santa Sofia in the half-occupied European capital of Nicosia, the only occupied capital in Europe. I sat down and have a thought about the possibility of all people in Cyprus being able to live together again. Last night, I dreamt about my village, and in my mind, I passed all the way through the most important places. The village that I loved so much. Everywhere I went to and everywhere I looked, I've been asked if we were going back. The rocks, the trees, the birds, and everything else. They were asking me if and when we were going back because they miss me, because we all left so suddenly without saying anything, and where we're going. Everywhere I was going, I have been asked where I was and when I am going to return. Suddenly, I wake up and I started crying, and then I make a wish to my God asking my God to help me to fulfill my dreams, to be able to return again and meet with my old friends and neighbors, Turks and Greeks together again, to be able to feel free and happy again. To work together for a better future for all the people. The people of my little mother Cyprus, like it was in the old days, I will make another wish now for all of us to throw away the bullets and have roses in our hands. I believe we can do it. 
we can bring all the good things back and throw away the bad ones. I wish I was a bird, so I could fly and go anywhere I want to, without asking for anybody's permission. To fly up to the sky and see my village any time I want to, without asking for anyone's permission. To go from one place to the other and do anything I like with not having to answer anyone's questions. To walk to my neighborhood in my village, to sit where I want to, to go and visit my own home, where I was born, where I used to play as a kid, where the roots of my family are, and be able to tell everyone that I am back. Oh, God, please do this favor for me. Let me fulfill my dreams. Now that I have still time to enjoy what I have missed. Oh, God, please do this favor for me. A letter to my dear friend Ahmed. My dear friend Ahmed, this letter sounds like a cry as I want to see you before my hopes die. <coughs> Remember, my friend, all the beautiful plans we had those days in our village and the future we were planning together for our children. Remember, in a village cafe, that you always wanted to buy me coffee. My friend Ahmed, I am sending you this letter to let you know that I miss you. Hopefully, we can get together again soon. Till then, please do not forget to reply to my letter and write a few lines to me. Till we meet again, I am sorry to say that you are not here to cry with me. Comrade Suleiman Fuat will now read his po uh, a poem named Free Pigeon from Feride Hikmet. Free Pigeon. Filimu, I can see this shine of barbed wire shining on your heart. I can feel the anger inside your mind. You say we must fight and hope. We must be the ones to shine the light. Filimu, where are clouds above the sky on my home? Can you see the sun? If I were a free pigeon, I would fly the six kilometers, 15 seconds, without even seeing the soldiers and the blood on their gun. If I were a free pigeon, I would settle on the branch of your lemon tree, I would bring you the smell of our sight, not polluted with the footprint of foreigners. If I were a free pigeon, I would take you with me to the waters of Aphrodite in order to wash our history from fear and hate. We will now have a guitar performance by Comrade Mehmet Raif.
I'd uh, like to invite comrade Suleiman Fuat once again to read his poem, I Need a Word. I need a word. I need a word to build up friendship, to end up wars and weapons. Yes, yes, I promise and I give my word. I give my word for friendship. Yes, yes, I promise and I give my word. I give my word never not to touch to human killing weapons. I give my word to say no to any kind of human killing weapons. Yes, yes, I promise to. Yes, yes, I promise to. And now we will end our evening with a piano performance by Joanna.
now have the uh, General Secretary of Turkish Cypriot Association for Democracy, Ferdi Suleyman, to give us a short speech. Uh, I'm on the committee of the Democratic Association of Turkish Cypriots. Now, Kavazole and Mishaulis uh, events have been organized for a very long time in London by our own organization and, and Akelian Britain together. We've got a long history. Uh, uh, the Democratic Association has got a long history. What I would like to bring to everybody's attention is that this organization was set up and run uh, for a very long time by our comrade uh, Nureddin Seferoğlu. And I just wanted to say a few words for how his valuable contribution that Nureddin has made to our, not only to our own organization, but to Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriots uh, working together in, in England and in Cyprus. Now, people like Nureddin have experienced what we have not experienced ourselves. They have experienced a matter of life and death. Now, in the face of that, in the 1950s, when Dentash was threatening Turkish Cypriots, they either withdraw, pull out, have nothing to do with uh, trade unionists or anybody left wing. These people stood by knowing, knowing that they, their life could come to an end any moment. Now, that courage, that courage, we don't know if we were in, in that sort of situation how we would react. We would like to say that we would also stand up, but these people did stand up, and our comrade Kavazoglu and Mishaulis gave up their lives in that process. Now, people say that uh, now if he, happened not to be, if he happened to be somewhere else, maybe he wouldn't have died. Now that they didn't know, they did not know that they were. They did. They did know that they could. They could die. The threats were there all the time. They knew that any time, somewhere, their lives would come to an end. But they never gave up. Why? They never gave up because the, in, they had things in their heart. They knew they were right. Let's not mince any words. Kavazoglu was not just a progressive. He was a communist. Being a communist, he knew exactly, he had the scientific understanding where the problems were. A lot of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots were blaming each other. He knew that the problem was not the Turkish Cypriots or the Greek Cypriots, it was imperialism. Who, most people do not know, who is this imperialism? Well, we know that all that, all that was happening because Cyprus was near the Middle East. The, the oil fields. These were all the important, the important things. And how did they do that? Divide and rule. They did it in Ireland, they did it in Cyprus, they did it in, in uh, look at today, Israel, Palestine. We're part of that process that is going on everywhere in the world. Now, knowing all this, we all know, th know this. We don't have to convince ourselves that we are right, that what he did. Now, what do we do? The important thing to take from that is an obligation, that we take that as an obligation to go forward. And what are we doing? Now, at the moment, we're looking at, there is a good possibility that Cyprus may unite, that Turkey and Cyprus have moved a long way from the 1970s. They now supported a candidate Let's not say that Turkish Cypriot president, as they like to say, but the Turkish Cypriot leader is something, someone they don't like. There is a good possibility, I believe, that a prospect of uniting our island, but without uh, us carrying out our obligation and understanding and going out to everybody and carrying out the Kavazolos and Mishaulis' weapon, and that weapon is common struggle, and that's the word, common struggle. How do we take that forward? Every single one of us have got to take that obligation now. We are at critical times. If we lose now, if we lose this opportunity, it is going to be partition. It is going to be Greek side and the Turkish side forever. So we are at the crossroads now, and we have to take that obligation very seriously. Thank you.
Dear comrades and guests, uh, our event has uh, ended now. Thanks for being here with us. And refresh refreshments are being served at the back. Thank you.